Good day, my friends. Walter here. Tinkering around out here in front of the garage the day after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a fine holiday. Uh, the other day I began on my carburetor from my green lawnmower. Got it took off. I don't have a carburetor kit yet, so I'm holding off on tearing it apart. I did take out the solenoid valve and tinker with that a little bit. I know once I get it tore apart, I'm probably going to need gaskets and everything else. I'm going to hold up on that and see if I'm going to order a carburetor kit or what. But today, I've got my whole toolbox project. I can always work on that from time to time. Got it sitting out here on some sawhorse, covered up with an old Lincoln welder cover. Made out of canvas. Can't drag this heavy box every time I want to work on it. I've never had any trouble with this carburetor, and I've been running this lawn more for years. But that don't mean I haven't acquired some. Last time we ran it out here, it was surging a lot. I did get the lawn more running, but I never cured the surging. So, rather than tinker with this carburetor anymore today, I think I'll work on my painting project a little bit. On my, I think I'll work on my toolbox project a little bit. Let's put the carburetor up. I thought about using paint remover on this toolbox. Which could get pretty expensive. I've got some paint remover here somewhere and I ain't been able to find it. I've got a couple scrapers I can drag out and I've got this scraper here and needs cleaned up a little bit. Let's begin by cleaning the dirt off the end a little bit. I think we're going to try to burn this paint off this toolbox. And, uh, See if we can scrape some of this paint off. Got that scraper cleaned off. When I was in the Navy, I often saw Bolton's mates and some of the other ones burning paint off of the sides of the ship with a little manual, I forget what you call them, some kind of burning torch. I got a propane torch here. Let's see if we can burn some paint off this toolbox. This might not work and it might. We can always sand it off, but you think about all that dust that have to breathe to do it. Well, of course I'll have to sand it anyway, but if we can get the paint off, it'll make it that much easier. Turn the gas on. We'll begin by lighting the torch. It smells like this torch is leaking, but once we get it lit, that'll be all right. We'll begin right here in the middle. Well, it definitely scrapes. It's on here real thick. Top layer is green. There's a layer of yellow underneath there. No tell me, no telling how many times this thing was painted when it was on the repair track. So yeah, we're going right down to the bare metal. Be careful! I have this paint all over the driveway out here. I have to keep it swept up. Okay. 
Yes, sir, we Bob. We're gonna be able to burn the paint off this toolbox. Couldn't do this with a wooden project if you done burnt your wood. That's what we're gonna tinker with today, working on this toolbox. Maybe in the process I can tell you a story. During my railroad career, I used a cutting torch a lot. Uh, many stories I can relate to you in regards to the cutting torch. One particular comes into mind. We were at a train wreck. Box cars, tank cars, locomotives, everything was turned over. All these big bosses were standing around figuring which car we're going to move. We got to do this. We got to do that. Old Pinky Freeman, he was a general foreman over me. In my department, he was the big boss that was out there. Walter cut that rail in two. There was a piece of railroad rail, section of rail about 40, 50 feet long, bent like a bow and arrow. It was just completely bent. And he's standing there talking to one of the upper echelon bosses in the railroad. I started cutting on the rail and I realized it was in a bind. It was going to fly out kind of. Once I got it cut, did it. Dang, my torch went off. This tank's almost empty, I'll be darned. I realized that the, the rail was gonna fly out like a spring, and Pinky was standing there. Don't ask me why he was called Pinky. It wasn't his name, it was a nickname. I said, boss, move out of the way. The rail's gonna fly out and hit you. Oh, shut up and cut the rail. I kept on cutting. Boss, gotta move. He ignored me like he, he, he was, He'd been on the railroad for years and years and years. He knew it all. Well, I'm telling you, this piece of rail don't fly out. I said, cut the GD thing. So I kept cutting, and he had forgot I was over there cutting. And that last little cut got through that rail. It come flying out like a bow and arrow. Caught him across both legs and knocked him for a complete flip. Knocked him plumb out of, off the ground. He just did a flip right there in midair. I thought I had broken his leg. Yeah, we're gonna run out of gas, doggone it. He knew he had screwed up, but I felt bad. I hope you ain't hurt, boss. I told you it was gonna fly. No, I should have known better, he said. Yeah, we're going to, I hope this heat don't warp this toolbox now. It sure is taking the paint off. I'm definitely going to run out of propane. Better stop and sweep that off. I don't want this stuff all over the driveway. I don't know. I could move it. Move it over, I guess. Maybe I'm burning too much off. Maybe I could just heat it to the point of peeling. Let's try that. I 
Oh, this is some pretty hard paint. Uh, and this, like I said, there was many incidents that occurred while using a cutting torch. Uh, here's one from the Navy. I was in the forward engine room on a minesweeper, the USS Jacana, J A C A N N A, I believe was the spelling. This ship no longer exists. But I was in the forward engine room and there was a fire pump. Or a big valve, water valve, I don't remember what the valve was for, but it was a huge valve and the stem on it was broke, the handle was broke off. I got to thinking, well I can repair that. I can graze the cotton picking thing off. I went and turned on the cutting torch. Had a fire watch with me. A fire watch is somebody to watch in case you start a fire. Well, sure enough, I was brazen away, forgot about the uh, firewatch guy over there. I was so busy brazing that valve, but it was coming out pretty good. And all of a sudden he shouted, fire, fire! Instead of putting out the fire, he had a fire extinguisher right there. He, uh... He ran out of, ran up the ladder and got out of the compartment and left me standing down there. He turned into a real hero. So what the fire was, there was a leak on the acetylene gauge uh, somewhere around the tank there and it caught on fire. Well, by the time I got my goggles off and looked over there, there was flames three or four feet high. The whole top of the the whole top of the regulator was in flames. I turned off the torch and ran over there. Without thinking, I tried to beat the flames out, trying to turn the valve off. I got the valve turned off uh, to stop the thing from burning. But in the process, I burnt my hands pretty good. My hands were blistered. I don't. I guess I didn't have any gloves on. Had to go to sick bay. My hands were bandaged up for a week or two. I never did tell on the rat fink for running out on me. We're definitely gonna run out of propane. I see at least, see one, two, three. There's a good three or four layers of paint on here, several layers of yellow paint. When you work around torches, welders, or anything else, it's part of your career. Look at that fire going out. You're going to get burnt occasionally. There's nothing more exciting to be burning some metal and have a hot molten steel burn through the top of your shoe and get down in your boot. Just burn hell out of you. Well, you can't get the boot off. It's all laid stuff. You don't dance around like you're doing this jig. But I've had metal get in my eardrums and roll around. That's exciting. I had it burn into my pants and get down in my underwear. Caught my clothes on fire umpteen dozen times.
I've told a story when, when I burned up my old smoking jacket, welding front stops in a box car, making a draft seal. I told that story before. Uh, I'll tell this one again. I had a piece of metal I was welding. I had been cutting on it with a cutting torch, and I want to weld this thing. And I need to move the metal over to line it up a little better while I can weld it together. Without thinking, I grabbed that piece of metal and picked it up to move it over. Well, naturally, it was hot. So instantly, my brain says, Ooh, hot, hot, put that down, you fool. So I dropped a piece of metal and old Bill Cleveland was working over on track two. Started laughing like a hyena. He was giggling and carrying on. I said, what are you laughing at, Mr. Cleveland? You know that ain't funny. He said, it sure don't take you long to look at a piece of metal, do it? I couldn't help but laugh myself. I was hurting like hell. But you're right, it didn't seem to take me long at all to look at that piece of metal. Well, it looks like my paint trick is going to work, but we're definitely running out of propane. And one of these layers of paint almost looks orange. I'm burning that little thing. Let's go back to the other scraper. Just gonna take two or three bottles of gas to burn this paint off. I guess it, anything you do costs money. Paint thinner would cost me money. Propane would cost you money. One common thing that happens a lot with people using cutting torches is burn a piece of metal and have a piece of hot metal fall on your torch hose. Just burn a hole in the cutting torch hose. I've ruined many of those not being careful. Where my hot metal fell. We used torches for almost everything in my job on the railroad. We would say I had a car with a bent seal step. We had cutting torches and heating tips and rosebuds. Uh, seal step just to flat metal step that you step on to climb up on the side of the car. Well, quite often you could just take and heat it in two or three areas there where it's bent, beat it back quite usably straight with a sledgehammer. Sometimes they're bent up so bad it's a waste of time to try to straighten it, especially if it's been in a wreck or something. It's best just to cut a new piece of metal and rebend it and make it a new seal step. We did that type of blacksmith work on the railroad all the time. All of our blacksmithing was done with cutting torches and heating torches. We needed to build a cut uncoupling lever. We had uh, ways of doing that. A lot of things we built, hand holes and ladder treads. If one wasn't available, you manufactured one. In an upcoming project, I'm going to be building me a blacksmith forge. I had no experience at all at forging with a real blacksmith forge, but we're going to try that out. I think it would be interesting. I'm not sure where you can buy uh, the right kind of coal to burn that forge. I'll probably use regular coal if I can't find any uh, torch. Coal, any coal for design for a blacksmith forge. Well, I'll conclude this video today. I'm going to continue to work on this a little while until I completely run out of paint.
Well, just for kickaroos, let's try a sander and see what that does to the paint. That works. Let's try a different kind of sander. Well, I can see right offhand that propane could get quite expensive. Maybe we get lucky with this sanding disc. That's too much damn dust to breathe, but it sure does clean it off. I'd be wearing all that paint time I got it off there. Sure would it was easier to brush. Cleaning the paint off this cotton picker is going to be a major project. I was doing a lot cleaner job with the propane. That concludes my video for today.